So it's an absolute pleasure uh, to be uh, asked to speak here today. And, uh, you know, Norbert and Donna are two of the uh, constants of my mathematical life in Montreal. And I was uh, thinking back, and I think I, I met them at a party in Carl, at Carl Hertz's in 1987, uh, way, way back. I soon learned with Norbert that uh, he seemed to know everybody in the mathematical world. Anybody that was mentioned, Norbert knew them. Not only knew them, but had a very strong opinion, one way or the other. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he, he wasn't shy to uh, share his opinion. Uh, and uh, like Santa, Norbert had a, a naughty list and a nice list. But that, that doesn't do justice because the nice list was really, really nice. And then there was the other list. 90% um, of the world. <laughs> so um, though over those 35 years, my you know, invite, uh, abiding impression is really one of kindness and uh, good humor. You know, and that's, that was just uniform. It was, it was always there. And so I'm really honored to uh, be able to speak here today and in particular with Donna in the room. Okay, so uh, I'm going to talk about uh, our protagonist in today's lecture are the ADE links, uh, which we'll get to by and by, those are our protagonists. But I'll, uh, before, it, it is a specialized family of uh, links in the three sphere, but before getting to them, I'll talk a bit about the motivation uh, and uh, then talk about the setting, branch covers of three manifolds, uh, plumbing hop uh, fans and Emmanuel Giroux's theorem, a uh, very uh, famous uh, theorem in contact topology. Then we get to the ADE links, and then I'll, I'll mention some uh, conjectures about them, and then I'll finish off by talking about what's known and sketch, uh, give a broad sketch of some of the proofs. So motivations. Uh, first of all, let's say three manifolds are going to be closed, connected, orientable, and prime. Now, prime means that they can't be written as a, uh, well, if you write them as a connected sum of two manifolds, one of the two manifolds has to be the three sphere. And it turns out that there's a prime decomposition theorem for compact three manifolds. Every compact three manifold, well, I should, orientable, uh, is a product of primes. So you close means compact? Closed means compact? Without boundary. Without boundary. Yeah, compact without boundary. It is a prime decomposition theorem. So uh, that decomposition, you can always factor a, a closed connected orientable three manifold into a finite number of primes. And that decomposition is unique up to uh, order. Uh, barring lens spaces, three manifolds are determined up to homeomorphism by the fundamental groups. And this is one of these lessons that if you had, you know, Poincaré uh, conjectured that the only three manifolds was, which were simply connected closed uh, were the three sphere, and so you, you know, right away you might have asked, which are the ones, uh, are, are three manifolds determined by their fundamental groups? And the, the simplest three manifolds beyond the three sphere are the lens spaces, and lo and behold, uh, you can have distinct lens spaces with uh, the same fundamental group. But here's a lesson for us, because you might have stopped then and say, well, it's just false. But in fact, it's not false. <laughs> If those are the only counterexamples. So the easiest counterexamples, uh, you, you run across those counterexamples right away, but in fact, those are the only counterexamples. Of course, it took over 100 years to prove that, but, but there we go. Like I said, barring lens spaces, uh, we're really, uh, the, the manifolds we're looking at are determined up to homeomorphism by their fundamental groups. So it's natural, try to find uh, group theoretic characterizations of the various properties of manifolds and Here's an example, which is sort of the background motivation for today's talk. Something called the L-space conjecture, which came out about 10 years ago. It's due to myself with Cameron Gordon and Liam Watson, and uh, in part to Andres Juhasz. There is also work of Oshfast and Sabo in there, somewhere in the background. And what it says is uh, the following three conditions are equivalent for one of the three manifolds of the sort we're looking at. One is that, uh, well, I'm just, there's some acronyms here. It's NLS. It's not an L space. So what this means, it's not a Hagard Fleur L space. That's a black box for us. And I'll say a sentence about it a little bit later, but it's just going to be, uh, we'll just leave it like that. So this condition on the Hagard Fleur homology of the three manifold, you can think of it as analytic. It's a uh, Hagard Fleur homology. It's a Lagrangian 
FLIR homology associated to a manifold. And it's defined that you get a chain complex, but the uh, differentials in the, the boundary homomorphisms are anal defined analytically. Uh, the second condition is that the uh, fundamental group is left orderable. And this is a condition, again, I'll define it in a second. Um, and it's completely different uh, than the first. And the third is that W admits a co-oriented type foliation. So I'm just stating this as is, but in a minute, I'll say a bit more about each of these conditions. Um, okay, so first of all, uh, W is not a hagar fleur L space. Well, uh, that it is a hagar fleur L space if it's reduced hagar fleur homology is trivial. It's, it's like a, uh, the reduced homology of a space is acyclic if it's reduced homology is trivial. It's a homology of a point. Uh, and so in the hagar fleur world, uh, the L spaces are just the acyclic. Okay, that, that's all I'm going to say about the, that. Um, now, the left orderability is a, much more uh, accessible and it's quite simple. You uh, call a group left orderable if it's non trivial and admits a left invariant total order. So G less than H implies that KG is less than KH. This notion has been around for a long time, but really, um, I'd say the uh, Ordered abelian groups had much more of an impact uh, in, the in the last century. But over the last uh, 30 years or so, uh, the left orderable, non commutative left orderable groups have uh, arisen in a number of contexts for various things, as say, uh, on the one hand, as an organizational principle for proving things. Uh, you, you, uh, it turns out you can use this condition, but also, as we've seen from the uh, L-space conjecture, it seems to encode a deep properties about uh, three manifolds. Now, some obvious examples uh, of less durable groups are, well, the integers with respect to addition and the standard order, the rational, same thing, the reals, Th those are all left orderable. In fact, left orderable abelian groups uh, what's less obvious, but not really hard to show, is that homeo plus R is a left ordered group. And in fact, it's a universal left ordered group for countable left ordered groups. Any countable left ordered group is a subgroup of homeo plus R. So, in particular, if a three manifold group is left orderable, it's the, the group is a subgroup of homeo plus R. Okay, so finite groups are not left orderable, nor the, the fact is, is that left order groups can't have torsion. You see, if um, G is bigger than one, then left multiplying by G, you see G is less than G squared. Left multiplying again, G squared is less than G cubed. And ta -ta -ta, you can't get back to one. So there's no torsion in a left order group. And if you have an infinite group, which is uh, torsion free, it may or not be left orderable. You, all sorts of things can happen. Okay. Now, uh, co-oriented population, that's the third thing. Um, we're looking on a three manifold, uh, a co-dimensional manifoldation. And if you like, that's a partition of the manifold into surfaces, connected subsets, such that locally around each point, I can find a neighborhood. So those subsets slice through the neighborhood like a deck of cards. They're just stacked one on top of the other. So that's a co-dimension one foliation on a three manifold. And uh, taught um, any three manifold has a, has a, has a foliation, but they most, uh, well, it, it's hard to have a taught one. And uh, being taught means that you can, given any leaf of the foliation, I can find a loop everywhere transverse to the foliation, which goes through that leaf. That's a taught condition. Uh, there are various equivalent definitions. Uh, one due to Sullivan is that you can find a metric on the manifold so all the leaves become minimal surfaces, at least locally. Um, I mean, the leaves aren't submanifolds, but uh, they're immersed uh, surfaces. Okay, and co oriented means just that you can uh, choose a normal to each leaf. Uh, <clears throat> which varies continuously around the manifold. Okay. Sorry, why did you say that uh, all three manifolds? 
are uh, can be fully affiliated. I mean, this, uh, oh yes, in dimension two is false, of course. But yeah, I mean, it's, three, it's, it's, it's a always, construction. It's not a deep construction, but okay. it's yeah. always do you use it for? You know. So, the, so there is no single point on no single point points. Yeah, it's an alternate image. Um, now, manifold discordant tuplations have infinite fundamental groups. In fact, any transverse loop is has infinite order in the first in the fundamental group. And uh, right, uh, <laughs> what I, yeah, what that says is that if the first Betty number uh, is positive of the manifold, then the manifold has a coriented tuffelation that's Gabay's thesis. Uh, but yeah, it's not an, it's not an L space, uh, Hagar Fleur L space, almost by definition. And uh, so it has a left order. Could you write it down, the, the condition on the right one? Yeah. So it has coriented tuffelation. Uh, yeah, the, I'll, I'll just write it. It's left orderable. And that's something special about uh, three manifold groups, and uh, it's not an L space. So the uh, the L space conjecture is is true for things of positive first Betty number, which reduces us to the case of uh, zero first Betty number. So those are rational homology three spheres. So you have the same rational homology as the, the three sphere, and there um, it's just tough to say one way or the other whether this condition holds or not. Same with that, same with that. Yeah, Stephen Liu, uh, yeah. Well, uh, locally, <laughs> but uh, no, it's a, it's a, if you have a coriant to tough foliation, you can find a, something called a circular order, but to get a, a, a left, that's the challenge. Can you go from the circular order to the left order? All right, so the L space conjecture, it sort of posits structural connections from these uh, three very different conditions. Uh, which is intriguing, right? That something's going on behind the scenes. Why should there be connections? And uh, well, there you go. Uh, there's been 10 years of work on it and lots of evidence uh, 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 saying it should be true. And uh, there we go. There's only one implication that's known that's CTF. If you have a coriant population, you're not in L space. <laughs> Sorry. And um, it's due to Ajvath and Sabo from around 2005. Um, but it really goes back, I think, farther to the work of Kronheimer and Murata. So you have not stated the, the L space conjecture. Sorry? No, not yet. You have not stated it. Yes, I did. Oh, yes, I'm sorry, I missed that. Okay, that was the L space oh, conjecture is that okay. these three okay. conditions are, are equivalent for a, uh, ah, a three manifold of the sort we're talking about up there. Okay. So, uh, I think another interest in the uh, conjecture is that it provides impetus for developing techniques to verify, do you have a coriented tuck foliation or not? I mean, constructions, uh, uh, developing constructions for verifying whether you have such foliations, whether the group is left orderable or not, which basically boils down to trying to build non-trivial representations into homeo plus R. Remember I said a group is uh, left, uh, Countable group is left orderable if and only if it's a subgroup of homeo plus R. So, can you represent the fundamental group of your manifold into homeo plus R? And something special about three manifolds, you don't have to get an injective representation, just a non trivial one. And, um, okay. Uh, so, today, what I'm going to do and, uh, is just talk about a manifestation of the L space conjecture and a family of manifolds that arise through. Uh, uh, contact topology. Okay, that, that's all that's said on the, the bottom line. So I have to talk about the setting. And first of all, branched covers. Well, uh, there are lots of branched covers between surfaces. And in particular, any near the closed surface of genus G, say it's, uh, or in this case, genus two, it's a twofold branch cover of the, of the sphere, the two sphere uh, along six branch points and the branch points, those are the red dots uh, around there, the map from up here to down here is Z goes to Z squared. But in general, it's like uh, Z goes to Z to the N for some uh, N bigger than or equal to two, well, could be one, I suppose. So that's a, uh, any uh, surface, now I'm thinking closed surface is a branched 
cover of the two sphere. Now the same thing uh, or something analogous happens in dimension three, any uh, three manifold of the sort we're looking at is a branch cover of the three sphere. In fact, that's threefold branch cover, but irregular in general. And here what you have is away from, well, the branch set downstairs is a link. Away from the link, the, the map is a, rig, is a cover in the regular sense of cover, but near the link, say so here's a component of L, I have a transverse disc. Now above the link, there's a, a piece upstairs and I have another transverse disc and the map from this transverse disc to this transverse disc. In this case, it said goes to said Q, but it could be said goes to said to the end. So uh, any three manifold of the sort we're looking at is a branched cover of the three sphere over link. And uh, for any given link, uh, there is a way to construct any uh, link and any n, integer n, at least two, there's a n-fold cyclic cover of S3 branched over L. And it's a standard construction, which I'll just say briefly, what you do, um, the thing is the first homology. So I've written L as a union of M knots. Okay, and the first homology, the complement of L, so duality tells you that's said to the end. There's a canonical basis, in fact, mu i, where mu i is the meridian of the ith component. And a meridian means just a little circle which goes around once, bounds a little disk, which is hitting ki exactly once transverse. So um, yeah, that's a canonical basis. And so given any integer n bigger than or equal to two, we have look at the epimorphism from pi one of the complement onto z mod n, which sends each mu i to one. I can do that because the first homology of the complement is set down, generated by the mu i. So I have a epimorphism like that. And that determines an n-fold cyclic cover of, uh, in the cover in the classic sense of S3 minus L, which is, so that's just an N, uh, that's a degree N cover, which is, it's a regular cover in the, in the uh, technical sense, the, the uh, group of uh, covering automorphisms is uh, deck transformation Z mod N. Now, this can be completed to a branch cover because the point here is that you see that above mu i, since mu i is sent to one mod n, uh, mu i hat, that's its inverse image, is, uh, is also going to be a circle. And the map from mu i hat to mu i is just z goes to z to the n. And now you just fill in, yeah, I'm just going to plug in a solid torus here map across this solid torus where each of the transverse disks goes by z goes to z to the n. So this is a standard construction to associate to any link in any integer n, at least to an n full branch of the cover. And there are many examples. Uh, well, I mean, you just do it. I mean, for instance, for the trivial knot, all its n fold cyclic covers are the three sphere. Um, for the hot flink, That's this gadget. It's a two-fold branch cyclic cover is um, the RP3. And for the, the trefoil, it's two-fold branch cyclic cover is L31. The lens, that's the lens space, L31. Now, of course, you can get all sorts of manifolds. And if I looked at, for instance, sigma n of a hyperbolic knot, a hyperbolic knot is a knot whose complement emits a complete finite volume hyperbolic structure. Uh, generically in N and in the knot, this is hyperbolic. For instance, if N is at least four, this is always hyperbolic. Uh, and you can list the cases when N is uh, uh, two or three, when you don't get something hyperbolic, you can list the knots. Yeah, okay. Right, so that's one of our uh, basic constructions is given a link, getting an n-fold branch of the cover, branch of the link. I'm sorry, so this, uh, did you say that this was subjective on the space of all three manifolds? 
Sorry? Did you see that you get all three manifolds? Yeah, but not as branched cyclic covers, as okay. branched covers, yes. Okay. The more complicated branching. Well, because you can do it by then, then such. Uh, yeah, you can, if you get a Dane, yes. Yeah. yeah, if you start with a Dane surgery description, then you can convert that into all, a branch all, covering all, description. All, yeah. All yeah. Now, another basic construction uh, here is uh, it's called plumbing hop bands, which might seem like a rather uh, odd construction, but it turns out to be quite natural and actually very important. And what you're doing, a hop band, well, I drew the hops link there, which I can redraw as something like this. I'm getting lost. Here we go. So these are the same. And you see the band here. That's a hop band. And given a surface S and an arc I properly embedded in the surface, I can attach a hop band to the surface in this way. And that's called plumbing a hop band. Boundaries of surfaces that you could just concatenate this, uh, these operations and stuff. Uh, you know, you start off, you only have one, we have a hot band, you have two, you have a trefoil, but already when you're plumbing three things, you can get infinitely many different links. And um, it turns out each of these links, their complements are fibered over this. So that's a special property. Uh, so there's some work going into proving things like this, but. Uh, if I have a surface F obtained by plumbing hop fans, there's a map, oh, well, there's a locally trivial vibration where F is a surface and a map to the circle. Now there's a very important theorem of about 20, 20 years ago of Emmanuel Giroux, who we know very well here. Uh, it is, a, by the way, it is its, it's 60th anniversary in, in July. I see, okay, cool. From four, from four to eight. Right. Okay. In Paris. So um, uh, what he said was the following is a, the following two statements are equivalent for a fiber link with fiber F and monodromy little f. And um, the monodromy is to build the, if you have a manifold which fibers over the circle you see, you can think of that manifold as the surface F cross I, and then where you glue the ends together. Uh, that's, and the monodromy is the gluing map. So um, what's his theorem? It says that F can be, trans, uh, can be transformed into a plumbing of Hopf bands by a finite sequence of such plumbing. So you don't, you start with the surface F, it's not necessarily a plumbing of Hopf bands, but after attaching some Hopf bands, it becomes a plumbing of Hopf bands. So stably, it's true. And what the, this is equivalent to is that the open book, so I'm gonna now just use another black box. Given a surface F and a homeomorphism of the surface to itself, uh, I can define what's called an open book. I get a three manifold and uh, that three manifold uh, carries a very particular contact structure, which is determined by the open book. So that's the theorem of Thurston and Finkel Kemper from about 50 years ago. Um, but that's it. So, uh, so this is, if you have a, a three manifold which fibers over the circle, you can build a contact structure. Now, whatever con contact structure, I, I'm not gonna go into it today, but it's, a, it's an important geometric structure on the, uh, on the manifold and what, um, Giroud's theorem says is if I have a fibered link and I look at it, the associated open book, so that's the pair, the surface and the monodromy, the associate, you know, and this is living in S3, um, the associated contact structure is the tight contact structure on S3. There's a unique tight contact structure on S3, if and only if F can be transformed uh, into a plumbing of Hoff bands by. So this is a, um, I mean, of course, your root theorem is much more general, um, but in this particular instance, um, this is all we, I want to do. And we call strongly quasi positive, which uh, I'll just say, 
like this. FSQP, fiber strong positive positive, if these conditions are satisfied. And this is, like I said, these are the protagonists of this talk. Um, and I, I guess what I'm, I'm trying to say, uh, amongst other things, is that this is a natural family. I mean, uh, they, they, uh, they're natural in the sense that they are precisely the set of fiber links in the three sphere, um, which carry the, the tight contact structure on the three sphere. Uh, I, I don't have time today to go into it, but th there's also some, sort of the ana complex analytic geometry of C2. There's another approach to these things. It's a very natural family that I want to say. Okay. The ADE Coxeter Dinkin diagrams. Well, they've already been uh, uh, discussed to some extent in the last talk, and they're this well known family. Uh, we have here, uh, they're, uh, well, two infinite families, uh, A and B and these, and uh, then the three exceptional ones, very well known. And um, they arrive, so they're, they're a meta pattern in mathematics. If they, uh, there are many seemingly very different, uh, well, they, they um, classify many different uh, phenomena, seemingly unrelated phenomena. So they, they form a, meta, a, a basic phenomenon <laughs> in our universe, right? Uh, these, these gadgets. And I, I won't go too much into it, but as already mentioned, Coxeter uh, uh, came up with, with these in, uh, in the study of finite reflection groups, Dinkin in uh, classification of uh, Lee Alvarez. I want to mention John Mackay, who I, I just learned uh, passed away uh, uh, very recently. And, uh, uh, but uh, famously, there's the Mackay correspondence, which relates these diagrams to uh, finite subgroups of the SU2. And um, then they come up in other things. Uh, finite simplicial graph, graphs whose adjacency matrices have eigenvalues, all eigenvalues <laughs> less than two absolute value, et, et cetera. So they're really basic phenomena. Okay, so our pro protagonist, the ADE links. Well, what you do is you start with an ADE diagram, in this case, D5, and um, you do a plumbing of uh, Hopf bands according to um, the diagram. So here, as you see, for each of the vertices, I've got a little Hopf band. And then I'm plumbing them together, say this one to this one, because there's an arc connecting those two. Okay, so uh, this is just going to give me a family of links. And it, it's independent of all choices made. In fact, at which side you do the plumbing on, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so you get this family, and we'll call those ADE links. Um, and the ADE links are fibered strongly quasi positive because they're plumbing. You always do just one, one twist? I mean, one full twist? Yeah, just one twist. One. Yeah. Okay. Now, uh, th these links, uh, you know, I've defined them sort of abstractly here, but uh, we, I can give a, a concrete expression of them. So, but I have to tell you what a pretzel link is. So, the pretzel link given by parameters P1 up to Pn is, well, this is a schematic diagram for them. You have uh, these are arcs. Oh, and these boxes here correspond to PI half twists, either right-handed if PI is positive or left-handed if PI is negative. So for instance, this is a minus two, three, seven pretzel. Okay, and the uh, ADE links, uh, I think sort of, I, you know, there should be a little question mark over your head because you're seeing some... Uh, is that, sorry, there's a, if, PI, if one PI is, a, is, a, is, a, is odd, then you just do a... You reverse the orientation. Yeah, you have to be yeah, so because, because then, then you get some. I mean, yeah, what, what happened? Then? Well, I haven't talked at all about orientation okay. in this, uh, but uh, yeah, that does. So, well, there is an impact that maybe I won't. We can discuss it. Okay. So, um, the ADE links are pretzels, and sort of suggestively, is suggestive of something or other. You notice for the E eight, you get minus two, three, five. 235, that's interesting. 234 for E7, 233 E6, 22 M minus 2, 
for dm and then one m. So these are, as you know, this is basically just a, a platonic triples. And they're rising, you know, I, we, we won't discuss it. I can discuss it with anybody who's interested after. Okay, now the uh, A, these links that now I'm looking at their two full branch cyclic covers. And uh, it turns out the fundamental groups of these two full branch cyclic covers are in one to one correspondence with the finite subgroups of SU2. If I start out with a link, I have the two full branch cyclic cover, that's a closed three manifold. And it has a fundamental group. And if I start with AM, the link is the 2M plus one torus link. And um, the group is, well, the cyclic group of order M plus one. If I do DM, I get the binary dihedral group of order four times M minus two. And then the binary tetrahedral, octahedral, and icosahedral groups. Now, quite interestingly, this is precisely. Mackay correspondence. And there's stuff going on in the background that, again, I don't have time to discuss, but it's showing up for a reason. This is, re is related to uh, these things called Duval singularities. Okay, so since pi one of the two four branch of cover is finite, you're in L space. Uh, Elliptic manifolds are always L spaces. So that means they have trivial reduced Taggart fuller homology. Non left orderable fundamental group, because it's finite, and does not support a co oriented type foliation. Because, uh, well, the fundamental group is finite, that can't happen. So for each of these manifolds, the two fold branch cyclic cover. Uh, it just shows that you're neither, uh, well, you are in L space, have non left orbital fundamental group, and do not have coherent population. Okay, so a uh, theorem of myself with Michel Boileau and Cameron Gordon about five or six years ago, we showed that if you had a prime uh, fiber strongly crossed a positive link of, well, genus, uh, positive genus, the genus of a link, you, you just look at all surfaces in the three sphere whose boundary is the link, and you take the one of minimal genus. And we showed that if, if the n full branch of the cover is in L space, then n can't be bigger than five. And there are examples. Like if I take the trefoil knot for n equal two, three, four, and five, you get L spaces. Uh, but the minute you hit six from then on, you don't have an L space. So from this and some other results, led us to this conjecture that if you have a prime fiber strongly quasi-positive link, then and some branch cyclic cover is an L space, trivial Hagar fleur reduced Hagar fleur homology, if and only if you're an ADE link. Okay. Um, now, uh, well, this is generically true, uh, and uh, but what about uh, for the low value of this event? Two, three. Okay, well, that, that's, uh, that's non trivial. Uh, and uh, to a great extent, still open. Okay, now, given the L space conjecture, there are two alternate forms of this that can be investigated. And one is the LO version, where instead of saying is an L space, you say has non left orderable fundamental group. And um, the last one is with co oriented type foliation. So if some branch cyclic cover does not have a corrient to top foliation, then you should be an ADE link. Okay. So uh, well, this is what I, I want to look at and talk a bit about today, about some of what's known. Um, so let's start with L, a prime fiber uh, strongly quasi-positive link, and that XL, that's S3 minus a little tubular neighborhood open tubular neighborhood be its exterior. Now, what Thurston did, one of his contributions with it would be to say, this is the sort of thing that happens. Either XL is ciphered fiber space, which means it's foliated by circles. It means that it's a disjoint union of circles and near every point that foliation looks like a handful of spaghetti, okay? And 
So either you're foliated by circle, either you're hyper or you're hyperbolic. So you have a complete finite volume hyperbolic metric, or there is a torus in the exterior, which is pi one injective pi one of the torus includes into pi one of X of L, but that torus cannot be, it's not parallel into any boundary component. And this is the, the Thurston, uh, uh, well, way of dividing up things. And this is useful because um, you can approach, if I want to approach anything about knots and links, uh, you can do it by uh, you know, looking at these three categories. Look at the cipher case, look at the hyperbolic case, where you'll use different methods, but you have hyperbolic geometry there. Look at the toroidal case. Uh, the ADE links are all cipher links, it turns out, and we consider them in turn. Uh, let's see, where am I in terms of time? Okay, I have about 20 minutes, I think. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. So, uh, oh, nine, uh, 10 minutes, that's right. And then 10 minutes questions. Okay, good. Uh, each, um, well, okay. So uh, this is with, I, I guess I, I was written, but I didn't mention this joint work with uh, myself, Cameron Gordon and Ying Hu. And um, each version of the ADE link conjecture holds when L is a cipher link. In fact, the uh, L space conjecture is known for cipher fibered spaces. So it's, it's not surprising. You just do one and you get the others for free. Um, the, I want to talk a bit today or in the remaining time about about, this. about eight minutes. About eight minutes. In the remaining eight minutes, I will talk about this. If you have a hyperbolic uh, fiber tone causing positive length, then these groups are left orderable. And uh, it follows, for instance, just from this, that we know that if some branch cover of a fiber tone quasi positive link has finite fundamental group, you have to be an ADE link, but okay. Leave that. So sketch of the proofs. So here's the, here's the idea. We have the, I want to show uh, that, uh, you know, when can you get a branch of the cover, which has a left orderable fundamental group. And so you start off with um, the fundamental group of the info branch of the cover. And the idea is to build a representation into homeo plus S1, which lists uh, to the universal cover of homeo plus S1. Now, homeo plus S1 is topologically, it's it, hom homotopically, it's a circle, it's SO2. <laughs> you know, I, its affirmation retracts down to that. So its fundamental group is said, it has an infinite cyclic cover, which can be identified with the set of homeomorphisms of the real line, which commute with translation by one. That's not surprising. So if we can find a representation, say an injective representation, pi one sigma NL in homeo plus S1, which lifts. <coughs> but sorry, it, it always lifts, no? It always lifts? No. Uh, no. No, there's an obstruction class. It's the Euler class of the representation. It's in the two-dimensional cohomology uh -huh. of the group. And that has to vanish for it to lift. Uh, and as a, that's a non-trivial problem. <coughs> You can, there are many manifolds which have representations uh, into homeo plus S1, but they have non less durable fundamental groups. I can't lift it. No. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so, um, so the problem is how do you construct such a row? And I'll be very quick. Um, and maybe I'll go just quickly to this, this picture. Um, you see, uh, if I have a fibered link, then I can think, as I mentioned earlier, I can think of the, the complement of the link as the surface cross I with these red uh, lines or the I factors. And then I glue the ends F cross zero to F cross one with the monodromy F. And the resulting space is the complement of that. Now there's a flow, natural flow, called the suspension flow of F on this, uh, so the flow is on S3 minus L. And what do I do? I just start in a point, I run along the arc, I hit here, I come around using F, and I, well, say I started here at F, well, I'm lost, I'm lost already. Here we go, one, then I come around to F of one here, come around, so I get a flow on the manifold. 
And if L is ciphered, uh, it turns out that this is a periodic flow. All the, all the orbits are circles. If F is hyperbolic, uh, you know, it really doesn't matter, but I'm just gonna say the words, that's what's behind there. It's, um, it's a pseudo Anisov flow. So maybe you've heard of Anisov flows. Pseudo Anisov flows are Anisov flows with a finite number of singular orbits. Okay, so there's some sort of degeneracy along a finite number of closed orbits. And that makes them pseudo Anisov, but they have manifolds which admit pseudo Anisov flows, they have very special properties. Okay, so uh, now I've got this flow on the complement of uh, the link. And the fact that you're strongly quasi positive, well, you have to use some topology, some geometry here, means that that flow, I can actually extend it over S3. So the link components become flow lines. Okay, so we're using strongly, that's not always the case, but if you're strongly quasi positive, you can do that. And now what you do is you pull back the flow to uh, the n full branch of the cover. You see, I've got a branch cover of, uh, of S3 branch long L and the L components of L are flow lines. So I can pull the flow back and get a flow up in the branch cover. And it turns out that that flow is very nice. If it's uh, periodic, if L is ciphered and pseudo Anisov, if L is hyperbolic. Now, so, so far, what have we done? We've, we started with the fibering to get a flow on S3. Uh, and then I'm pulling it back to the branch cover. And now I've got a flow there, which is very nice topologically. And uh, now I'm gonna pull back once again, I'm gonna go from sigma and L up to the universal cover. You see pi one of sigma and L acts on the universal cover, but since I pull back the flow, it's gonna, that action is gonna permute the flow lines. And that means that I end up with an action of pi one of sigma and L on this quotient. And it turns out under all our hypotheses, that quotient is R2. And whoops, not only is it R2, but the universal cover is R3, which splits as O cross R, where the R factors are the flow lines, which are drawn here in green. Those are the flow lines and O is this transverse R2. Now the idea here is uh, you can compactify O. O is R2, but I can find a circle, an ideal boundary for O. So that when I take D as the union of O and this circle, I actually end up with a disk and uh, the, the circle at infinity is to see the boundary of it. And moreover, the action is, ex again, I have to use hypotheses here. The action extends over the compactification, but then you see the, I get an, a representation by um, sigma in L. Plus S1, which is the boundary of the compactification. So that's where I'm getting my representation. Uh, I guess I'm probably just about out of time. So I, um, I, I did explain <laughs> here uh, how this is done in the Seifert case and in the pseudo Anisov case. Uh, but okay, it doesn't matter. Uh, we've got our representation. Does it lift? Well, if how we were doing was starting from the flow on sigma and L, it's not obvious that it's true. I mentioned the obstruction to lifting is a certain element here. This turns out to be an eisenberg maclean space. So that's the same thing as H2 of the, the fundamental group. And, um, uh, but what you really have to do uh, to show that the Euler class vanishes you have to actually work down in S3 and, or at least an orbifold. Somehow you use the link L and the integer N to, to build an orbifold and you've got some sort of flow happening on that orbifold. And uh, then you use, once you've got that, you get a representation of the orbifold group into, into here. This is a finite index subgroup of the orbifold group. And uh, you've got that and now, knowing that the representation is defined on the orbifold group and somehow know, knowing something about peripheral data 
of the representation. This is a geometric construction of the river. Here, you can show that the Euler class vanishes. So that's it. And I think, uh, yeah, that's probably, I probably ran out of time, so I'll stop there. Okay, thank you. Hello. So, are there questions or comments? Oui, Paul. Steve, uh, I think at one point you mentioned a, a pi one injective torus. Yeah. What, what is that? Oh, that's a, uh, that's when you have a, a torus in your manifold, such as pi one of t, so that you, there's a natural homomorphism okay. here, and I want that to be injective. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. And uh, yeah, the, understanding pi one injective tori in three manifolds is the sort of a, the 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 base the basic setup for understanding geometrization. They, they form a really important class of objects. If you want to understand uh, topology and geometry three manifolds, you have to understand pi one injective tori. It's know? part of first and first and yeah. classific classification. Uh, other questions? It's, it just strikes me that you you could have a. a a map to the homeo plus of R that it would have a huge kernel and it's still enough. That's right. This is weird. It is weird, but it's, um, I mean, that, that's a theorem and uh, it's only uh, good for three manifolds, prime three manifolds. Hmm. The thing is, is that if you look at the kernel, hmm. it's an infinite index. If I have a non-trivial representation, homeo plus S1, yeah. sorry, um, homeo plus R, there's no torsion in homeo yeah. plus R. So if I have a non-trivial representation, the kernel is of infinite index. Now, what you have to show is that infinite index subgroups of fundamental groups of prime three manifolds are locally indicable. It means that given any fi non-trivial finitely generated subgroup, there's a homomorphism on the set. That's a three manifold effect. Uh, it's very, very specific to dimension three. And yeah. I mean, so there's some, it's a basic three manifold topology, which has to be applied to prove that. So, so you can take that huge lump that just maps to the trivial thing and smear it out, basically. Yeah, uh, if you like, uh, <laughs> uh, the picture that's, that's is- That's a technical term. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, that's exactly what you do. The thing is you have this short exact sequence, A for kernel, W, and then so on to G, which is a, subgroup of homeo plus. That's left orderable because it's a non-trivial subgroup here. That is locally indicable, but so that, that implies, it turns out, again, it's non-trivial theorem, but that's left orderable. So given a short exact sequence where the outer two things are left orderable, you can show the middle thing is by some construction. So that's, so the three manifold component here is that infinite index subgroups of the fundamental group of a uh, prime three manifold uh, there. Left orderable. <laughs> quick, quick question, uh, yeah. Stephen. So, so you use a, you use a in your, in your setting you use a, a soft version of uh, Giraud's uh, theorem. Yeah. So the the fourth fourth theorem of Giraud's fourth theorem is that any is any tight contact function on the on the any yep. two dimensional uh, contact manifold can has a book, open book decomposition. Yeah. And, but you just use a kind of top of the, just the, use the, the soft part. Yeah, I. Of the, of this that's theorem. right. So my question is. Could you use the, the hard part of it? Yeah, I mean, probably. I mean, to prove the, uh, uh, well, okay, let me put it to you this way. I stated a theorem with Michel Boileau and Cameron Gordon that if for N6 and more, you are, can't be in L space. Actually, that involves some uh, deep work in symplectic fillings and whatever, which go back to Liska. Mm -hmm. I mean, there were versions in Kronheim and Rovka and Ashvat Sabo, but it's really Liska's theorem. He said if you had a, symplectic filling of a, an elliptic manifold, then in fact, the boundary of the symplectic manifold was connected and it's, uh, it was um, it's negative definite, the uh, intersection pairing. Um, you're using things like that. Uh, you use, use them implicitly through the results of other people. That's right. And now to, to use, so I'm just saying that because it could be, yeah, uh, use a more refined version of, uh, or as you say that, well, the real version of Giroux. I was mentioning that really just to say that this family of links I'm looking at is natural. It's a natural family to look at. And in fact, the whole quasi-positive thing, I, I've probably got minus how much, do I have two minutes? I have maybe two minutes left. I wanna say something that uh, 
there's a complex analytic geometry going on here. First, there's a notion. So what, what this is is C2, and there's the unit sphere. And quasi-positive is the general thing. Those are the lengths you get by taking a complex analytic curve in C2. It could be smooth. It doesn't have to be smooth. It could have singularities. And intersecting, and assuming it's transverse to the three sphere, and intersecting. And it's going to intersect it in a link. So this is the family of quasi-positive links. Uh, so it's, they're uh, very natural. Strongly quasi-positive are those for which you can do this and then isotop here. So um, actually, a lot of what I said today, or you know, is, you, you can prove theorems about quasi-positive links, etc. I just specialized to the, the fiber, strongly quasi-positive case. But uh, you know, there's much more general things. And I'm just mentioning this because I think this is a beautiful family of links to study. It's, it's arising naturally from complex geometry. It includes uh, the set of uh, links of curve. Uh, you know, if take an affine curve, for instance, and look, look at the, lo the link of a singularity. Well, that would be quasi-positive. And uh, so it includes, you know, all things about uh, links of singularity. So the, the, the Milner, Milner construction. Yeah, Milner construction is Milner in there as well. Of, yeah. Uh, um, yeah. Complex singularities. Okay, so yes, so let's take the figure again.